So, I gotta admit, this is probably gonna be a long video. I'm probably gonna have to change the battery out at some point. You might wanna get yourself a nice drink. I'm gonna adjust you a little bit. There we go. And, um, welcome back to the show. Let's roll the intro. Hello everyone, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today I was like scrolling in my bed. <laughs> Literally, I was like in bed with no makeup on and I was scrolling through my phone and you know that Google has like these things where you can like, like they cater some articles for you to read basically and i saw one that said 105 science fiction books what is it well it says 100 plus best sci-fi books to take your to infinity and beyond and i thought tell me more google and oh my god by the way the sweater so soft i'm sorry it's new and i'm like ew i feel good in it so anyway so i was like okay so i'm gonna um, look through this because i consider myself to be a, um, like a big time sci-fi reader like most of my favorite books are science fiction books you know and i thought i remember there was a list of like a hundred um what was it fantasy books that you should read and people were like this sucks and stuff like that but i actually looked through this list and i think it looks pretty okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna look through it Yes, I am going to mention the 105 books. No, I'm not going to insert pictures for all of them. But um, I will tell you which ones I have read, which I, I have read 35 of them, or at least attempted to read 35 of them because some of them I DNF'd. Oh, geez, you know. And um, yeah, I'm just going to tell you. And the ones that I want to read, because some of these I just don't want to read. So the first one they have is The Blazing World and Other Writings by Margaret Cavendish. And this was published in the wonderful year of our Lord, 1666. Good year, good year, Margaret. That's a good year to publish. And it says, My, uh, Cavendish might be one of the earliest science fiction writers that you've never heard of. Born in the 17th century, she was a poet, author, playwright, and trailblazer in the age that was unfriendly to women. Oh, wait, is there an age that is friendly to women? I'd like to go there. In The Blazing World and other writings, she crafts one of the first feminist works re um, telling the story of a shipwrecked woman who's made empress of the blazing world, using her power to ensure that the land is free of war, religious division, and unfair sexual discrimination. Margaret, you go, girl. Um, I'm not interested in this, and I will tell you why. And it's because this... Um, like the pre-science fiction as we know it era, which I call the Frankenstein era, um, doesn't appeal to me. Every time I try to read anything from that era, I would say any, any time I try to read anything from 1960s and back, I just can't get into it. I don't know why. Does that make me a bad reader? I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm not here to judge you. Don't judge me. So I, I'm not very interested in this, however, if somebody gave me this as a present, I would, I would probably read it and I might not like it, I'll be honest with you. And speaking of which, Frankenstein or The Modern Prometheus by Mary Shelley, 1818. You all know I hate Frankenstein. Do I really have to explain this in every video? I fucking don't like Frankenstein and I appreciate it and I appreciate Mary Shelley for what she did to the genre and as an author i just don't like it i don't like frankenstein so i'm not gonna read it i mean i'm not gonna read it it means i did read it for high school but i won't read it for my general enjoyment journey to the center oh by the way if you don't know what frankenstein is about i don't know what rock you've been living under but basically the sky makes a monster and then just leaves the monster and then the monster becomes a monster, unsurprisingly. Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne, 1864. I have read this. And basically it's an adventure novel where this um, group of people go to the center of the earth. So they manage to survive flammable gas chamber, prehistoric creatures, and a literal volcano ejecting their party. It's, it's a good book for people that like adventure novels. I personally am not a big fan of uh, adventure novels. I had to read this for high school. 
didn't enjoy that much, but I did enjoy it more than Frankenstein. So, I mean, that's something, right? Number four is The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. You know the story. He creates a time machine, but the thing is, if you create a time machine, then can you go back in time to where you don't create the time machine? Because then, you know, that, that whole thing. I don't remember it very well. I just remember not liking. I actually also tried reading The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, which is, uh, by the way, um, the time machine was 1895, and then 18, 1897 is The War of the Worlds. Fucking hated that book, couldn't get through it, I'm sorry. Um, then we get to Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, which was in 1932, hundreds of years in the future, the world is a utopian dream, which we all know how it ends if it's a utopian dream. Sounds more like a dystopian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's this utopian dream. <laughs> Read dystopian nightmare. There is genetic manipulation, an intelligence-based case system, heavy medication, and the fact that people now learn in their sleep. What a time to be alive. <laughs> um, I love this book. I know a lot of people don't like this book for some reason, but I really like this book. I read it for high school and I really loved it. So that's another one that I've read. Then we have 1984. I know, I know you like We better, and I know that uh, that he, George Orwell, apparently stole this idea from, I believe, a Russian author. I, I, I'll get to We, but I will say that before I read We, I read 1984 by George Orwell, which was published in 1949, and I really love it. Then we've got The Mar Martian Chronicles by Red Bradbury, and this was. Uh, published. I think this is done in, by publishing date. Um, but this was published in 1950. Um, I have no idea what the Martian Chronicles are about. I'm guessing we go to Mars and we meet people there. Uh, more of a loose collection of stories than a novel united by a central narrative. The vignettes in the Martian Chronicles chart the violent conflict between colonizers and natives of the Red Planet. Do I want to read this? No. I'm not interested in reading it. I just, there's, I don't know. I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm, I'm just really uninterested in reading this book. All right, number nine. Oh, we're only to number nine. I Robot by Isaac Asimov. I hauled this recently. I have read it. I loved it. This basically is a compromise of short stories and essays that detail the origin and development of robots. Some which are mad and others which are, which have political aspiration or just enjoy a good joke. I really recommend that you read I, Robot is such a good book. And I mean, if you're gonna go anywhere with sci-fi, you might as well try to go and read Isaac Asimov. And speaking of, the number 10 is Foundation by Isaac Asimov. This was published in 1951. I have read this. Thoroughly enjoyed it. This number 11 is Fahrenheit 451 by Red Bradbury, and this was um, published in 1953. I both love and hate this book. Like, I have a love-hate relationship with this book because I feel that it's really, like, hard to read. It's, it, it's at that time where authors thought that every sentence had to be a metaphor in order for anything to make sense or in order to, it's very flowery. It's like a flowery writing, but at the same time, I really, really love this book. It's really an ode to books, to to music, to to individuality, etc. It's. It, I, I think it's a beautiful book. I definitely recommend it. In, in this world, firefighters don't put out fires. There are no more fires. Firefighters cause fires and what they do is they cause fires to anything that is deemed um, not in the welfare of people and People are basically drugged. There are huge like they're the whole walls of television and internet It's not called internet at this time, but you know, we recognize it as internet and people are just numb and you know if you are not part of that then you're hunted down by the government and we follow a firefighter that finds a girl who kind of inspires him in some way and i love the book and yet i can't stand the book because the way it's written oh my god it's really annoying okay then we have arthur clark's childhood's end and this was published in 1953 i tried to get through this book it didn't happen. I just couldn't. Every time there's a utopia, it's actually a dystopia, just so you know. I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. I actually did read this. This was kind of terrifying. 
forget the movie although will smith did a good job you can enjoy the movie as its own thing but it's not about that in the wake of a pandemic that has transformed humankind into vampires robert neville is the last human left alive he spends his days hunting down the bloodthirsty creatures and locks himself into his home at night when the monsters can safely roam the street without being heard Featuring a twist ending that rivals anything Matheson wrote for The Twilight Zone, this influential sci-fi horror novel will keep you hooked from the very start. Um, do I agree with that? I actually had to push myself through this because again, it's written in that form in like 1950s that everybody thought that you had to write very difficult <laughs> in order for it to be good. But I do recommend this one. I have read it. It's it's good. It's just getting through it is bad. I don't know if that made any sense. Then we have the Chrysalids, Chrysalids by John Windham. I have no idea what it's about. So are you already picturing that one scene from The Silence of the Lambs? Well, Wilhelm's take on the Chrysalids is less, less creepy, crawly, but definitely still disturbing. The characters of the chrysalids live in a society in which people with mental physical abnormalities are forcibly sterilized or killed. Oh. Our hero David Storm has strange telepathic dreams and his friend Sophie has six-toed food. They're obvious targets but they manage to hide their vulnerabilities from the world. Things escalate, however, when David discovers more kids are like him and they all must band together to defend themselves and escape to sanctuary if such a place is even exists. What the hell? I want to read this so bad. This was, although I'm, I'm probably going to hate the writing, this was in, in 1955. Wow, I kind of want to read that one. Hmm. Okay, number 15, The Cannibal for Lebowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr., 1959. So it's a devastating nuclear war War in is a modern dark age where science is vilified and illiteracy celebrated. Only the monks, no, no, that's not, that's not for me, so, sorry sir, not for me. Then we get to 1961 Solaris by Stanislav Lem. You guys know this is one of my favorite books. Um, it's about, it's about a planet where an ocean is kind of sentient but kind of not and it's about first contact that's all i'm gonna say about it because i want you to go into it just like not knowing because that's the best way to go into books but yeah i've read this this is one of my favorite books of all time and also the movie with george clooney in it oh, love love that movie then we will have of course robert a heinlein heinlein Stranger in a Strange Land. I don't know what this is about. Don't plan on reading it. A Wrinkle of Time by Madeline Longle. Longle? Longle. Longle? I don't know. Mad I, I, I don't know. Basically, this story is if you took an acid trip, but a bad one. That's how I felt when I read this story. I don't, I don't understand how you read this to children. But, you know, it, it, I, I don't even know what it's about, but it's kind of like I felt like I had taken acid and I was tripping the fuck out. I hated this book. And speaking of, oh, that was, this was in 1962. And in that same year, <laughs> Mr. Philip K. Dick, I love Philip K. Dick because he just doesn't write for me, <laughs> wrote uh, The Man in the High Castle. Uh, this, this, this book is about things that happen and and prophecies and and I don't know I really don't know and it's like if the um, Axis powers has won World War II instead of the other way around I tried to read it okay it was a bad experience now we have 1965 Dune by Frank Herbert you guys know this is one of my favorite books of all time do I have to keep talking about Dune I don't think so I think that's a bad idea if I keep talking about Dune let's go Flowers for Algernon. I have this book. I plan to read it. This book is about a little mouse that is given like a drug. He's in a, he's in a trial that makes him super intelligent. And then there's Algernon. Algernon um, is a man with a mental disability and they give him the same treatment. He becomes really intelligent. He makes friends, blah, blah, blah. But then they realize that the mouse starts to fade away and die so they guess that the same thing is gonna happen to Algernon very sad very sad then we have again Robert A. Heinlein the moon is harsh the moon is a harsh mistress it's a futuristic retelling of the American Revolution 
no, Mr. Heinlein, that's not gonna happen. But book number 23, A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, <laughs> I have to admit that uh, Space <laughs> 2001 Space Odyssey is one of my favorite movies of all time, which is the most pretentious thing I have ever said on this channel, I think. Yeah, it's the most pretentious thing. But um, I do know that uh, Mr. Kubrick is well known for having destroyed books over and over again uh, for his vision. So I really want to read this book and see how it stacks up against the movie, you know, because I'm pretty sure... Kubrick was like, this book, this book uh, is incredible, but I will do what I want. I don't know why I gave him that accent. Like, he didn't have that accent. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, published in 1968. Have read it. Oh, Philip K. Dick, man. I just don't understand. Like, he puts words together, and I understand those words, but when they come together, I just don't get them. So, I... Mm. The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, by, uh, written in 1969. I have read Ursula K. Le Guin before. I read The World for Word. I always say it the way, the wrong way around. The Word for World is Forest. I really enjoyed that. I don't know what The Left Hand of Darkness is, but it says that it is about a planet, Ekumen, which houses an alien colony that has no fixed gender. Gently A. A native of Terra is sent to the planet of Ekumen and must confront his own rigid ideas about gender and sex in the process. That sounds amazing. I actually already ordered this because of this list, so yeah. Oh my god, no, this is not happening. Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. I read, I know that it wasn't written by Anne McCaffrey, but one of the most like ridiculous books I've ever read in my life is written in these in this world that Anne McCaffrey creates where dragons can like like teleport but not in only time but not, not in only space but time I just no I I I I'm painted I'm sorry I read her book written by her daughter which is Dragon's Code it, it was so bad <laughs> but I love it Slaughterhouse by Kurt Vonnegut 1969 haven't read it do want to read it Ringworld by Larry Niven 1970 have no idea and i think in around 1970 because of the space race and everything we're going to see a lot of military sci-fi which is just not my jam so i'm gonna like skip through a bunch of this but nessus an insane and cowardly puppeteer and speaker to animals in the oh in an orange furred and dangerous cat-like alien <laughs> if only there was a bar for them to walk into oh okay Ring World, I might read you one day. I don't know. I I'm putting this in my wish list, honestly. That sounds like fun. Roadside Picnic by Arkady and Boris Strugatsky. Yeah, no. I have no interest. This is about aliens uh, uh, of Earth areas called zones begin to exhibit strange and sometimes dangerous phenomena. The Zones also contains artifacts with supernatural properties. This sounds like the Southern Reach trilogy. I'm still scarred from that. So no. Uh, the Dispossessed by Ur Ursula K. Le Guin. Again, um, this is uh, set in the same use of... <laughs> set in the same universe as Hainish Cycle. Is split between the twin planets of Uras and An Anares. One is a capitalist society marked by wealth and inequality, while the other is a social. Yeah, no, that's not happening. The Forever War by Joe Handelman. Handel. Handel. Handelman. Handelman. Is that how you say that? Um, this is 1974. I do want to read this. It, but it's called the finest military science fiction novel in recent decades. Um, I don't usually like um, the Forever War. Not not the Forever War. I don't really usually like military sci-fi, but I don't know. This sounds like fun. Uh, the titular war is set in the stars and its drafted soldiers are young men and women who must participate in an intergalactic war. Yet the years tick on while they're gone and when they return, their own Earth is an alien planet to them. This anti-war novel rises above the constraints of its genre to become a transcendent epic in its own right one that's still relevant today that sounds like fun the moat in the god's eye by larry niven and jerry purnell in 1974 
biblical allegory that warns against hypocrisy and conceit. Not happening. This one has a cool title, The Female Man by Joanna Russ, published in 1975. Cited as William Gibson as one of, the, of his guide, guiding influence, The Female Man brings four very different women. Janine is a librarian waiting to get married, living in the never-ending Great Depression era. Joanne is a feminist trying to make her mark in the... No, you see, I don't like that. I don't like timelines like that. So even though this has a cool title, I just don't want it. Dahlgren by Samuel R. Delany. I still have not recovered from trying to read, what was it, Babel 17? I don't think I'll ever recover from that. So, um, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to read this. Kindred by Octavia A. Butler. I don't know a lot about it. I know that it's a low sci-fi. Kindred is the story of a young African-American woman, Dana, who lives in 1976, but finds herself transported to 1815 when most black people in America are still brutally enslaved. She meets her ancestors and witnesses the inhuman cruelty they endure and experiences much of it herself firsthand. But no matter how much pain she tolerates, she finds herself unable to control her time traveling, which leads to increasingly dire situations that Dana realizes she may not survive. Yeah, this one I actually have um, in my collection somewhere and I plan on reading it. Also, The Stand by Stephen King, it published in 1978. I do plan on reading this one. It's about a pandemic. It sounds like fun. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I don't like funny books. No. Ari Colonized Planet 5, Shikasta. <laughs> I love like, I love the names of these books. 1979. Um, it's usually just referred to as Shikasta. Uh, the first installment in the novel Lorette's Canupus in Argus series is not just the title that's unusual. Compromising reports, letters and speeches, journals, entries, the novel. It's a study of the planet Chacosta, which is an allegorical Earth. These documents specifically look at the planet's prehistory, its degradation leading to the century of destruction or the 20th century, and the apocalypse, World War III. That actually sounds good. But I don't know. Mm, no, I, I don't know, but that actually sounds good. Down below, Station by CJ Churry. 1981. Corporations don't do super hot in space. <laughs> Earth Company is a private enterprise that has one determinal goal to explore space. This is how Pell World nicknamed Dumble down below by the stationers is founded. It becomes involved. I'm not 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 interested. I'm not I'm not interested in this book at all. Like at all. Then we have Neuromancer by William Gibson, which I actually have read and I understood about like 30% of it. It's basically the matrix, but more confusing. What do you want from me? This video is already half an hour long. Contact by Kara Sagan, 1985. I do want to read this. This this is one of the only novel from the 20th century's great science ambassador revolves around humanity's first encounter with extraterrestrial intelligence. Informed by Sagan's own research and theories, the story of contact centers on Ellie Arroway, a scientist who soup who spearheads the attempt to communicate with and physically reach the other side of the universe. That sounds like fun. I actually do have that on audiobook and I plan on read it. 42, The Handmaiden's Tale by Margaret Atwood, 1985. I have read this and I didn't like it. I just didn't like the writing. I really didn't like the writing and I just, I don't know. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, who is a shit person by the way. Uh, published 1985. I recommend this book. This book is really awesome. This book is about space training. It's about what separates us from aliens, what, how far we can push children, how we, how far we're willing to go to achieve our means, you know. Um, I really like this book, but I recommend you buy it secondhand. Don't give Orson Scott Card your money, please. Shards of Honor by Louise Max, Mac, Master Bujold. Mm, what? No. Not interested. Uh, number 45, Watchmen by Alan Moore and David Gibbons. I have read this. It's forever stuck in my corneas. It's very um, bloody and it's 
stuff. I don't recommend it if you're not into gore. Watcher by Dean Coton uh, on the year I was born, 1987. Yeah, not interested. Dawn by Octavia Butler. I actually own this and I am interested in reading. The Player of Games by Ian M. Banks. No, not interesting. Red Dwarf, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor, 1989. Not interested. Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Definitely interested in this one. Already own it. Will be reading it. Um, Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I'm trying to get through these faster because like, it's been a while. You know, uh, Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I am interested in this one, but I, I don't know. You know, it's kind of weird because I, I like the movie is such a staple for me in my life that I don't know how I feel about it. Her Smoke Rose Up Forever by James Tiptree Jr. 1990. This is a pen name, by the way, Alice Sheldon. It doesn't say much about it. Like, it just says that it's a good book. So I'm not interested from this description. Oh my god, I love this. Star Wars Heir of the Empire. Uh, Heir to the Empire by Timothy by Timothy Zahn, which which came out in 1991. We're not going to go into what Disney did, although thank you Mandalorian for making it better. But yeah, I've read this book, loved it, read it, loved it. Um I used to read a lot of Star Wars books when I was a kid, so there you go. The Real Story by Stephen R. Donaldson in 1991. Yeah. So, so it's a space opera. It begins with a man and a woman in a bar on a space station with all the other patrons whispering over such an ugly swashbuckler would woo such a beautiful woman. Another man quickly frees her from his clutches. But wait, the narrator chides. This romantic tale of a damsel with distress is not the real story. What unfolds from there is a complex web of hidden motives, shocking acts of violence and betrayal, all of which builds up to a resolution you'd never anticipate. I would read that. Yeah, yeah, I would read that. All right, number 55, The Sandman, Preludes and Nocturnes. I have read this. I don't like it as much as other people, so. The Doomsday Book by Connie Williams, 1992. No, I'm not interested. Ammonite by Nicola Griff. 1992. No, not interested. Not, not just not interested. The Children of ba of Men by P. D. P. 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 D. James. I can speak. Yeah, I have been interested in this one. Um, you know, there's 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 a movie. You know, it it says that the movie bears little resemblance to source material, but isn't that the case with most science fiction <laughs> books? Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. No, I'm not interested in this in this book at all. Um, it follows hero protagonist, and yes, that is his name. That alone just I couldn't read this book. I would just be like, his name is hero protagonist. The Giver by Lois Lowry. It was it was published in 1993. This was actually um, required reading for a lot of people in. Uh, the US and I do want to read it. I want to I want to read this The Sparrow by Maria Dor by, <laughs> by Mary Doria Russell 1996. We're only on number 61. I want to read this because it's apparently by a Latinx author But honestly, I don't mm, Yeah, that's why I want to read it. But otherwise I don't and their shadow by Arson Scott card it was published in 1999. Now this is, follows Bean, who literally is under shadow. Okay, he's not literally under shadow, but he lives under under shadow. And my best friend told me not to read it, so I'm not going to. Darwin's Radio by Greg Bear, 1999. Yeah, no, no, that doesn't sound like fun. I don't want it. Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff. Meh. Midnight Robber by Nalo Hopkins, 2000. Yes, I own this and I want to read it. So yeah, young Tan Tan is reveling in the costumed festivities when a crime committed by her own father lends them both in a brutal new halfway tree tree world. <laughs> Here monster creatures from fourth core come to life and Tan Tan is forced to embody the mythical Robert Queen character if she has any chance of escaping alive. Number 66, 
Number Nine Dream by David Mitchell. I will tell you I want to read this. Number um, in rural Japan, 19-year-old EJ Eiji Miyake has just lost his sister and his mother is MIA. His only choice to go to Tokyo in search of his father. Yes, his search uncovers more questions than it does answer. Most pressingly, what exactly separates his dreams from his reality? That sounds like a good time. The Chronolids by Robert Child. No, mm-mm, mm-mm, yeah, not interested in that one. Otherland City of Golden Shadow by Tad Williams. Like, I just don't, like, just reading this tattle, titles, I'm not interested in these. Uh, Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang, 2002. I have already read some of this, and I love it, so there's that. Altered Carbon by Richard K. Morgan. You know, who, who, who was it? Um, Emily from Emily Fox read this and hated it, but everything Emily hates, I love, and everything she loves I hate and she hated this so I might pick this up <laughs> I might <laughs> I watched the TV show it was really good um so I might pick this up Vinny's Underground by my baby Jeff Vandermeer 2003 two lovers are separated in a world of mutant meerkats decadent cities and underworld labyrinths full of stitched together monsters in this classic work of unclassifiable but unclassifiable but brilliant literature from the author of the Southern. I'm reading it. I ordered it. I don't care. It sounds amazing. It reminds me a little bit of Born. I want it. I want it. It's like a feverish, nightmarish dream, but one you don't want to wake up from. Exactly. That's literally Jeff Vandermeer in a nutshell. Number 72, Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. I don't like Margaret Atwood's writing, so I won't be reading that. Pandora Star by Peter F. Hamilton. No, not interested. But number 74 is one that I'm interested in, and that is Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguro. And Kathy is a ca carer who looks after organ donors. After she works, she reminisces about her past experience at Hailshaman, a boarding school in England, the school where she met her two lasting friends, Tommy and Ruth. Through the plot might, though, I'm sorry, though the plot might seem to wander at times, the thread comes together with a shocking bang from the revelation that there's much, more, that is much more horrifying than what the plastic surface of the book might suggest. I already ordered it. I'm buying it. I'm reading it. Old Man's Ward by John Scalzi. So reading this. This is about an old man who is like drafted into war. And I love that. It reminds me of um, Kings of the Wild. Yeah, I want that. World War Z by Max Brooks, 2006. Already read it and loved it. It's The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. That is not happening, child. The City and the, Ci the, city, and the city by Chana Mieville. Mieville, Mieville, I think so. Um, this is the winner of almost every SFF award under their sun. Inspector Tudor. Yeah, no, this sounds like something that is not for me, so I'm not reading that one. The Wind Up Girl by Paolo Basigal Basigalupi. Sorry, 2009. I started this book when I was in Venezuela, and then I never finished it, so I reordered it. And now I'm gonna finish it. And it's really cool, it's kind of cyberpunk. You know, kind of like it's based on the power and perils of bioengineering. It's got like how we treat robots like shit, and it and it deals with climate change. It's, it's really good. I just never finished it. I'm really sorry this video is so long. I thought it was gonna take a lot less long than this. Redemption of Indigo by Karen Lord, 2010. Yeah, I might read. I might read this one. Death's End by I not. Xi Xin Liu, okay. Um, this is the finale to the trilogy, you know, the one that starts with the three body problem, which I tried to read and I didn't like, so I'm not gonna read this one. Oh my god, Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey, 2011. I tried to read it, I really did. It just, no, mm -mm. no ma'am. Number 84, The Martian by Andy Weir, 2001. Yes, yes, you've all, you, you know what this, even people that don't like science fiction know what this book is about and love it. So, I'm gonna read it. I mean, 
I have already read it. I have it written. No, I put it up there. So it's up there somewhere. Legend by Marie Lu, 2011. Not gonna happen. No, no YA dystopia for me. The Last Policeman by Ben H. Winters. Now this is really interesting because this is about an uh, like asteroid is gonna um, Earth, you know, like gonna destroy Earth. But this policeman is like dead set on solving this crime even though everyone's gonna die. I think this one sounds like fun. I might read it. Although one of my greatest fears is that like aliens and 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 like asteroids or meteorites crashing into Earth and destroying everything like they did with the dinosaurs. So yeah, <laughs> Amata, uh, no Amatka by Karen Tidbeck. When Vanja is sent to collect intelligence for the government remote barman colony of Amatna, she doesn't expect to feel immediately on edge. There's something strange about Amakta from its citizens' behavior to the way that commonplace objects have to be marked. The longer she stays, the more wrong it feels. And when Vanja eventually uncovers what's wrong, it may already be too late for her. Oh my god, that sounds amazing! Yes, I want to read that book. 88, Red Shirts by John Scalzi. John Scalzi, listen, I already want to read one of your books. We're, we're done. No. Ancillary Justice. I kind of have like a interest in this book, but I'm not sure how much that interest will turn into actual, you know. Oh my god, it's a spaceship AI. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm on the fence. Dust. By Hugh Howey is number 90. Mm, I don't know. No, I'm not interested. Um, 91, The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey is one of my favorite books. Love it. Read it. It's about zombie apocalypse. But it's so much more. But I but but you know, I don't want to make this video longer than it is. And then we have Station Eleven by Emily St. John St. John Mandel, another one of my all-time favorite books. Please read it, it's amazing. It's it's like uh, the Georgia flu. It's like it's it's about a pandemic that spreads super fast. So maybe don't read it right now. But it like kills everyone and not everyone. But you get to hear about people that die from the pandemic, and then you go to the future to people that are trying to salvage the things that they most love, including art and and theater, and how easy it is to get caught up in this idea of a savior and stuff like that. I don't know. I absolutely love this book. So. Red Rising. Yeah, no, I tried. That's not gonna happen. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Love it. I love everything about this book. Oh my god, found family in space. <laughs> what else do I want? I don't want anything else in my life. Planet Fall by Emma Newman. I've been trying to read this book for so long and it just it's so expensive on Amazon and everywhere. So basically, Renata Galli escaped an overpopulated Earth because she believed in Lee Su Mi's vision of humanity in space. Since then, she's worked as a visionary on an alien world, all the while concealing a secret that the whole colony has been built on a lie. Time comes to reveal the truth, but it could rip her colony apart forever. Yeah, that sounds like a great time. I have it on my wish list. I hope I get it. Binti by Nettie Okorafor, 96. Love Binti, love Binti, home, hate Binti the masquerade, the night masquerade, so yeah. The Fold by Peter Kleins. Now, 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 nay, nay, listen. I'm sorry I said nay, nay, I've been watching Bailey Syrian too long. But, um, it, yeah, no, this sounds like, yeah, this sounds like time travel -y. I don't do time travel. Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I loved this book until the last 10 pages. I, I, I was like in love. I was in love, loved everything about it, then the last 10 pages have penned and no. Then we have 99, which is Nine Fox Bandit, Gambit by Yu ha, Yoon Ha Lee. Um, it was published in, in 2006. And this is one of my best friends from here. Um, Angela from Literary Science Alliance. I'll leave her channel up above if I have enough links left. But um, basically, this sounds confusing, and um, I can't even get through Philip K. Dick. So <laughs> no, thank you. Number one hundred, the fifth season by N. K. Jemison. I already read it. 
rated it. Overall, the series gets a four. The first book got a five stars. The second book got a five stars. And then the third book got a three stars. But you know, such is life. 101 Scythe by Neil Shusterman, 2016. No, no. This book is a romance story disguised as a, as a fucking sci-fi. That's not going to happen. 102 Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Novell. I just have to read the final book. Um... I don't know what it is about this series and me. I like it, but I don't love it, you know? Um, but yeah, it's fine. I like it. I, I, I read it. What else do you want from me? We've been here for like an hour. Six Weeks by Mer Lafferty. This book got like a three star from me. It was fine. It was fine. But it just it just seems like like there were a lot of mistakes made by a crew that shouldn't have made those mistakes. Number 104, EXO by Fonda Lee. Mm. No, this is a why. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. And the final book is The Gone World by Tommen Sweaterlitz. That's how we're gonna call it. No, this has time travel. Time travel is not for me. So yeah, that's the list of 105 books. I didn't tell you who the list was from. Who published this list? I think it's a good list. I think it has a little bit of everything. Um, it's a it's a place called Discovery. So if you wanna, I don't know, check the list out. I know I did it really fast. I'll leave a link to the list le down below. And well, that is pretty much this video. Man, I am tired of talking. So I am just gonna bid you adieu. I'm gonna thank you so much for coming. And if you, want to read any of these books let me know down below <laughs> but with that being said me and mr elf santa claus are gonna take a break now and i will see you in another galaxy far far away thank you so much for watching bye